My name is Dave Kozak. I'm the lead narrative designer for World of Warcraft. The title is a little misleading because the narrative is a super collaborative process. A lot of us are working together, uh, uh, particularly on Legion, uh, more than ever because we have so much going on. Uh, we have a lot of people working on the lore, but I do try and keep tabs of everything. So, uh, uh, yeah, I can answer answer lore questions. Uh, I've been working a lot on our artifact system, so I can uh, talk a lot about artifacts and uh, just a lot about what we're doing uh, in the game world. Uh, the way we uh, look at this is uh, there's the overarching story here. Uh, uh, players need to get the the four pillars of creation, uh, which is Titan artifacts, and only only those can shut the demon portal and, and stop this invasion. There's a pillar of creation in each zone, and so each zone is kind of a self-contained story. So you can do it in any order, and you still sort of feel the, the same kind of buildup of, of the plot. Each one sort of has its own story. Uh, it should flow really well, no matter what order of zones that you do it in. Uh, every zone kind of has their own local problem and their own local themes. Uh, so it should feel pretty cool. It shouldn't It shouldn't feel really jarring to the player, story-wise. The Burning Legion, they have their claws in uh, in everything that's going on. So, uh, for instance, there's a, there's a huge upheaval going on among the, the Vrykul uh, and, and their own... Uh, one of the great things about this expansion is we can sort of explore the, uh, the Vrykul deities and how they view the world and, and what's going on there. Uh, someone is trying to usurp the Vrykul gods, and sure enough, the Legion sees this as a way of, of uh, uh, getting an easy in, right? And so they've got their own champion, and, and uh, uh, he's uh, using uh, Legion power to try and usurp uh, Odin and the, other, and the other gods and try and take control of it. So the Legion has their hands in everything. So even though there's that local story in Stormheim uh, about this, the Legion's behind it, and they're kind of behind everything that's that's going on around the Broken Isles. That's how they work. You know, they always kind of work through intermediates. They always sort of use people's own, use people against themselves. And so the Legion is, uh, they're just devious. They're in every zone. They're a constant presence. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of problems everywhere. You know, we've been playing with the... Uh, uh, the max level game uh, for, for quite a while. In several expansions, we keep kind of tinkering with the formula. And I think we're trying to dial it in to just like the sweet spot of, of getting that open world exploration gameplay. And now that the, uh, the actual, the zones themselves scale up to your, your difficulty, we don't have to worry about carving out a little max level area for everybody. So the whole the whole world is is kind of your max level playground. There'll be stuff to do when you hit, you know, level 110 uh, all, all around the world. And yes, tons of treasures and rares and, and little hidden nooks and crannies. Yeah, yeah, that's a big part of that sort of MMO exploration feel that we want to get is to having all those little things to discover. You, this is the, you're the, the second person that asked me if we wanted to go back to old Azeroth again and, and like incorporate new stuff like do the level scaling. So we don't have any plans to do that right now, but having the tech is the first step to doing that, so. <laughs> we we joked about that. We joked about Gul'dan meeting Illidan, who's holding the skull. Like, oh no, no, that, no that's not mine. Um, yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think he'll find his own skull. But uh, what's interesting, though, is this Gul'dan is uh, becomes painfully aware of what happened to you know his previous attempts here on Azeroth. Uh, you know, his his own kind of alter ego, uh, and that's always going to be weighing in the back of his head that. Uh, Hey, you know, I, I gotta I, I gotta tread lightly here because I'm I'm walking I'm walking on the edge. Yeah. Uh, so I think this Gul'dan, um, as as clever and smart as as our previous Gul'dan was, this one has all that experience as well to draw off of. So uh, yeah, he's a, he's a formidable formidable enemy. I can tell you our idea behind that. We might. We might change it. This might not be canon. This this might be something that we decide we're going to tinker with, right? So I'll I'll give you I, I I'll try and explain what the thinking was. The idea was that uh, the demons in the Burning Legion they're kind of uh, uh, immortal and that they can exist across all the planes uh, unless they're killed in the actual Twisting Nether itself. Um, so uh, killing Archimonde uh, uh, at, at the World Tree uh, in Warcraft Three, well. You know, he was killed on Azeroth, but he would recoalesce in the, in the Twisting Nether and, and come back to, to haunt us again. Um, and the idea was, if you, you know, played uh, in, in Mythic and, and you defeated Archimonde, you actually defeated him in the Nether, uh, and then he'd be dead, dead for good. Uh, 
uh, that was the idea that we played with. Uh, we tried tried to explain that, and I don't, I, you know, I don't know. That it certainly doesn't come across in game because it's not necessarily explained in game. And maybe we'll change that. Maybe we'll change the canon of that. But that was the idea that we were working with. Was uh, unless you unless you rip these demons out and and take them to the twisting nether and kill them there, they'll always keep coming back. So, but maybe that maybe that's not canon. Maybe we'll we'll continue tinkering with that idea. I'm trying to think if we actually put them in Legion yet, but I, I think it's a possibility that they could come back, you know, out of the nether. Like, hey, now we're mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Not, that's not, not necessarily the case. It's, it'll depend artifact by artifact. Yeah, 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 we don't, we're not, we're not scorching earth. Actually, we are scorching Earth. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of bodies. There's gonna be a lot of corpses at the end of this expansion. But um, uh, n it doesn't necessarily mean that every artifact you there's a dead guy that you had to take it from. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic because uh, some of these uh, le legendary artifacts we know the story of. Right? We kind of know where Doomhammer came from. In fact, there's a comic about it. Um, what's fun is we get to kind of come up with equally legendary cool stuff for all the others. Like one of the, the hunter bows was Illyria's old bow, right? Um, and uh, the, the claw, it's actually the, uh, uh, the fist of Raden. Uh, uh, so this is for uh, in, uh, Elemental Shaman, right? It's the fist of Raden. Uh, it's, uh, I remember Raden from Pandaria uh, uh, is the, the keeper Ra, basically. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's kind of like a, a demigod of storms and lightning. Um, this is his claw. It's his claw when he led the Mogu armies against the Mantid, right? There's all, all, all the history going all the way back to when the Titans were running around Azeroth. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's his claw. And uh, when, you, well, when you pick up that claw, you also get a, a, a shield, uh, the uh, High Keeper's shield, I think we call it. It's kind of the, the lock that Raden used when, uh, uh, I shouldn't call him Raden, that's what the Mogu called him, what Ra, uh, the Keeper Ra. Uh, he created the elemental planes that imprison the elements, right? And this was kind of the keystone that he used to lock all those. So when you're an elemental shaman and you get this stuff, uh, you're really, I mean, you're wielding, okay, we haven't heard about it before, but now the lore is, is there. This is, this is something epic. This is super mega. You haven't heard of it yet, but you're going to hear about it now. And uh, one of the uh, uh, things we really want to do is as you level up your artifact, you can also learn more about your artifact, learn more about the story behind it so that you can kind of reveal all, the, all, the, all those little details, all those historical details about your weapon that you're carrying. That's a great example, actually, because we never depicted the claw before, right? Um, uh, and, uh, but now we get to kind of tell that story and build, build that up. And all of our artifacts, we're trying to have an epic mega story like that. One of our goals, certainly, and there's so many artifacts that this is, this is going to be hard, so I don't want to promise that we're going to do an outstanding job on every one. But one of the goals with the artifacts is e each one has a specific acquisition, like a specific scenario that you play through to get, to get the item. And then there's a whole background of lore that you can learn and unlock throughout you know, the rest of your, your, your experience. Uh, when you go back to your your, your your hub or, you know, in this case, the, the shaman hub, uh, which is at the Maelstrom, uh, and, and learn, yeah, learn more. Uh, the idea is the uh, artifacts are specifically used to combat the Legion. And uh, the other idea from a gameplay perspective is we want to have these kind of core features in each expansion that sort of kind of identify that expansion. So uh, your garrison was very much a part of Draenor. Uh, and you're leaving your garrison behind, right? You're not you're not building a garrison in the same way that you built a garrison in Draenor. Um, uh, and in the same way, artifact is really a, a, a key cornerstone of what the Legion expansion is like. And uh, at the end of the expansion, your artifact it's not longer it's no longer relevant. You're not using it to fight the Legion anymore. So you still have that appearance that you can unlock and transmog and whatever. Um, but going on to the next expansion, it's not really it's not really a, a factor. Uh, and maybe if we're smart, we'll do a story thing like you actually tap its power at the very last battle and the very last raid, you know, to, to give us a lore reason why your artifact isn't as relevant anymore. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, some really valid feedback we got from Draenor. We wrapped professions up into the garrison uh, in such a way that they sort of took second fiddle to what you were doing with your garrison, just as you, as you described. That didn't 
fulfill the profession fantasy in the way that we really wanted to. So um, we're doubling down, and we actually have a, a, a small profession team this time around that is, is developing custom content for all the professions uh, that has, you know, quest lines. You're doing quests to unlock different recipes, and you really kind of feel like the fantasy of, you know, the crafter going around the world to collect these rare materials and to collect these recipes and actually create stuff. Um, much more that that core fantasy of what a, what a crafter is. Um, so yeah, we're really we're really focused on that uh, for this expansion. We've been, uh, we've been building that content as we go. Yeah. Um, I well I I shouldn't talk about this, but we've been joking about the fishing pole artifact. Like an artifact level fishing pole would be the coolest artifact. Yeah. And then you have to you have to do epic fishing stuff to get it, but not a feature. Don't confirm that. Don't confirm that. It's just something we really really want. Uh, artifact fishing pole. Yay, Lily! Clearly greatest. And not a dreadlord. I point out, Lily, not not a dreadlord. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that would have said. So so it's fine. It's fine for you to say that Jaina, it's fine for you to profane Jaina's memory and say that she's a dreadlord. Lily, off limits. Just You do have a conscience. You do have a conscience after all. Yeah, no, Lily, greatest adventurer of all time. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Where everyone talks like they're from the future. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Where everyone talks like they're from the future. Hello, Arrow Spore. Me, Jess Cox, the number one out of the plan. The me, me, the tip top shape. I'm swell shape. And I can make a fortune for my ass for more. Shut the balls up! UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future Where everyone talks like they're from Shut the balls up! UFO Commander, we are the future We're gonna take you to the future Then we're gonna get to the future Where everyone talks like they're from Shut the balls up! Give me that! No! 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 <laughs>